Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday, March 7th. <clears throat> um, I just want to go over what we did in class today real quick for you. Um, there's not a whole lot that you're going to be doing on your own. Uh, so if you miss class today, we've got um, some hands-on things on the t on the trays on the table today. I'll, I'll talk about them very briefly, but you're going to have to make an appointment with me to come in during guided study to um, take a look at these a little bit closer, okay? Uh, all right, so first of all, we have the word property, so find this in your notes and go ahead and write down the definition. So property, in other words, property of matter. Uh, the property of matter is something that you can observe about a substance <clears throat> and if you remember in our element research uh, when we did the superhero, you guys looked up physical properties of matter as well as chemical properties of matter. So these are just things that can be observed about that specific substance that are unique to that substance and help identify the substance. So such as its color, smell, boiling point. Um, and then I wrote down some other examples because they're ones that we're talking about in class when we're looking at what's inside the vials on our trays. Um, and so you'll need to be aware of grain size, texture, luster, magnetic, magneticism, so whether or not something's magnetic, etc. So the kids looked yesterday at these three different substances and um, we talked at length about how they could be observed, like what were some character traits. We talked about how like the pipe substance was um, certain grains as, and then compared that to the fertilizer grains and the reddish brown substance. Again, you're just going to have to come into class and take a look at these things. I can't really talk about them. I want you to actually make these observations. So I'm going to um, scroll through these very quickly. And then um, in your notes, you've got a space here where we're looking at evaluating evidence. And it's very important from now on that we identify this criterion. A criterion is, um, criterion means it's, it's something that, uh, something will be judged based on. So your evidence will be based on whether or not it's detailed. So go ahead and write that in. <clears throat> More detailed observations provide stronger evidence. More detailed observations provide stronger evidence. It makes a lot of sense. The more detailed you can be when you're describing something, when you're identifying your observations, the more detailed you are, then that provides super strong evidence. That's what we want. Um, so when you observe a substance, remember to describe as many properties as you can. Record detailed information that might help a chemist identify the substance. Use descriptive words such as think, thick pink liquid rather than imprecise language. For example, we don't say light colored stuff or looks like Pepto-Bismol or it looks like gum. You never ever compare it to something else. You use that precise language. And, and that's what I mean when, with that fourth bullet. Avoid your opinions like it looks gross or um, anything with it looks like, avoid that to all costs. All right, so then um, we had these three claims that we were looking at yesterday. And so if you were gone yesterday and today, um, you're gonna have to come in and just make up this whole lab. I can't really talk about it in the slide because again, part of this is your observation. So I need you here hands-on looking at these vials. Um, but if you were here yesterday, you remember that we were talking about these three claims. And the goal for this chapter is to identify the mysterious reddish brown substance and determine if it's the same or different from the two other substances mentioned in the claims. Um, there were several classes yesterday that we didn't get all the way through those vials to um, identify those. So I'm going to skip this part. And again, you're just going to have to come in and make sure that you're able to identify and answer that question uh, on your own. Um, okay, so then we have four new samples, sample one, two, three, and four. Uh, these are unidentified substances, so they don't, you guys don't know what these are, and we're just practice making detailed observation and gathering evidence to tell the different substances apart. 
Um, again, I can't, <laughs> I feel really badly. I can't really talk about these things. I want you to make these observations because that's our standard. Uh, so I'm not going to describe any of these for you. You will have to come in and do them. Um, and so I'm just going to go through this. Um, yeah, pretty much you guys, I'm sorry. We're going to have to, oh, key concept. Let's go ahead and uh, write that down. So this should be in your notes. Uh, key concept number one different substances have different properties. That's the whole reason that, well, I mean, that's what makes them different. And that's why more detailed observations help us to identify a substance. So different substances have different properties. And then that's pretty much all I can tell you. So if you're gone today, please, again, make an appointment with me to come in during eighth period. I don't have a class during eighth period, so you can come in and just sit down at a tray and just get to work on um, identifying and making observations, all right? Okay, have a good day. Hope to see you tomorrow.